I love making underwater scenes. I made a crappy video on it in Eevee about two years ago. I can say that because it's mine. Let's do better. This will be a short and condensed explainer version of a mini course I have up on Patreon. But this is YouTube and most of you will probably have clicked off this video by now and gone on to other videos. For those who are still here, let's go. Underwater is not always about caustics in the blue. There are quite a few things to pay attention to, and looking at lots of reference usually helps. Here we see a few things. Saturated colors tend to get washed out. There is blur in addition to volume. The volume, scatter, and blur are environmental and not usually evenly distributed. The more crap that is in the water, the thicker it appears and the quicker your vision falls off. And, and, and this guy. And sometimes there are statues in the water too. Let's jump into Blender and make an underwater environment. These are pretty simple steps here. I'll use this image as a reference, minus the swimmer for now. I'll do more videos on underwater scenes if this video does well, so definitely hit like and subscribe and watch it like a hundred times. <laughs> just, just kidding, but onward and upward. The first thing I like to do is set my camera and block things out. Here I set my camera about 2 meters off the seafloor and gave it a wider angle. This is your preference of course. Make sure you set the clipping planes for the camera to something higher than 100 or the distance will clip off. I set my resolution here to 2391 aspect ratio, that's, that's just a cinematic preference and has absolutely no bearing on what we are creating here. The next thing I do is block things out. I added in a ground plane and then began making the rocks. I made a cube and added a subdivision modifier set pretty high. Be careful here or you can crash your system. Next I added a displacement modifier and called in the displace texture from my PBR textures. You would call in a displace texture from a zip file you download from any online PBR resource like ambientcg.com. These are usually black and white images at around 16 or 32 bit depth. That resolution makes for much nicer displacement. Once I had the look I'd wanted, I just duplicated this rock and rotated it. You can make individual separate ones if you want, but this worked here. It really is just fooling the eye, and as long as there are no noticeable patterns, it will probably work. To see what it looks like, I turned on Cycle's rendering engine here and had a look. Not bad. Next, I created one base material on the cubes. You can select all the cubes here as long as the one you gave the material to is selected first. Then go to Object, Link Transfer Data, Link Materials, and everything you selected will get the new material. It's a great shortcut. Now, I started texturing. I used Object Mode on the rocks as it gave me more leverage. Then I added a PBR sand texture to the ground that I got on Ambient CG, and it worked here. Next, I would added sunlight to see what it might look like with a stronger light source, and hmm. It was time to add some volume to the environment. I added in a box with a principled volume and played with the color a bit until I'd gotten blue. The density is sensitive, so I really kept it low. You can remap it, but I just pulled it almost all the way down and it worked here. Then I'd rotated the light and played with the anisotropy on the principal volume shader a bit until I got what I liked. The rocks were bland, so I added another texture to them to give them some grime. People in the Blender community love procedural shaders, and I do too, but sometimes real images just work and look more real and take less time. I rendered it out and not bad. There was some texture stretching here, but I could always fix that later. Overall, it was decent. Next, I needed a water surface. I decided that we were relatively deep, so I wasn't going to worry about caustics too much, but I wanted a hint of the surface up above. If you want caustics, there's a really awesome tutorial. Uh, BBBN has it up on his channel, so check it out. It's in the links in the description. A plane with a principled shader and a noise bump work perfectly here as well. I never render everything in camera. I always render passes and bring things into compositing later. I know lots of people love to just stay in Blender, and that's fine, but it's just not me. I set the rocks as a holdout collection to cut out the parts of the surface that they would occlude. I figured I'd animate it for this video, so I added some noise to the camera settings to simulate floating in water. This took some time, but it's subtle, and then I added in a particle system with some forces to simulate particles in the water. I played with this for a while to get the look I'd wanted. There's no magical formula here, you just play with it. And I'd rendered it all out separately out of Blender. Then I brought all the frames into DaVinci Resolve and set up the comp. After color correcting a bit and doing some other tricks I go over in detail on the Patreon video, I was pretty happy with the result. Resolve is a beast and I would bore you to death on this video if I were to tackle it, but it's worth learning. Any environment is really about paying attention to what's really there, or what's in a photograph or video. Reference is everything and it helps quite a bit. More reference is always a good thing. So I could take this much further and add dust and, and all sorts of other things, fish, particles, whatever, but you kind of get the idea. So, so I hope this overview helped you a bit. If I can get to 100,000 subscribers, I'll do a whole hour long video on YouTube about creating different environments in Blender. So help me help you, deal? Good. Until next time, stay healthy, friends, because that's, that's what's really important these days.